Are those big, boisterous bees and those petty, pesky peas disrupting your podcast recording? Hey everyone, I'm Nick Chamberlain and welcome to the NCC Audio YouTube channel. And in today's video, we are going to be going over three different ways on how to remove those pesky plosives from your podcast recording. Let's get started. The first way to remove those plosives is to buy a pop filter. So buying a pop filter is gonna be your best bet in removing those pesky plosives from entering inside your podcast recording. Now, when you go to buy a pop filter, you are gonna come across way too many different options. So you're gonna have a single nylon, a double nylon, a metal, a mesh pop filter. Like You're like, okay, I just want a pop filter. Which one do I get? Now there's two options to figuring this out. You can go into the deep internet and find some forums with some audio engineers just going back and forth, <laughs> talking about which pop filter is gonna be the best pop filter for your audio recording. Or you could simply go to bnhphoto.com, type in pop filter and just buy the number one seller. It's like $18, $19. That'll be your best bet. And you can just attach it there and I'm just kind of holding it here right now. It's working too that way if you just wanna hold it. This second way to remove those plosives from your podcast recording is to move your microphone, adjust it. So a lot of times people are gonna be talking directly into the microphone. Now this causes airflow from your mouth to get hit to the capsule. By capsule, I mean diaphragm of the microphone and that causes the plosives. So you could simply move it away from your face. So you could put it below your mouth and point it towards your mouth and put it above your mouth, point it towards your mouth. So basically do not directly talk into the microphone. I know that sounds kind of counterintuitive, but that will also remove the plosives from your podcast recording. So those two different ways will remove the plosives from your recording so you do not have to remove them in the post-production. Easy enough. Now you may be thinking, Nick, those pops are already in my recording. I cannot prevent them. They're already there, so how do I remove them? All right. Super simple. The third way to remove the pesky plosives is to remove them in, in your post-production, right? Like what you're doing in your editing. So let's figure out how to do that using some simple EQ techniques. All right, let's get started on the computer. Come on, let's go. All right, great. So now I'm gonna show you two different techniques on how to remove these unwanted plosives in your recording. So when it comes to podcast editing, mixing, and mastering, I use Adobe Audition because it has all the tools I need to quickly edit and produce podcasts. You can use these same techniques in your favorite digital audio workstation, but not always as easily. We are currently in the multi-track view, which is the most common view for most DAWs, but we will be applying these plosive removing techniques in the waveform view. And to get there in Adobe Audition, you can just double click your clip here or click the waveform view right here. So I'm gonna double click. Great. All right, so let's get started. First, let's take a quick listen to this silly sample here. Those pesky peas, they're always bothering me. I hope I can show you how to fix these peas. All right, so those peas were pretty disgusting. There's a P here, P here, and I heard a B here, and this H sound created some low end rumble that I did not like, and this P here was also pretty gross. So let's use technique one on how to remove these plosives. First, go up to your effects, go to filter and EQ, then pull up your parametric equalizer. So we're gonna start with a blank slate here because the first technique we will be using involves using your high pass filter. So let's enable that. So by default for removing plosives, I recommend starting around 75 Hertz. And of course you can raise it or lower it, but the key here is to roll off as much low end as possible without making your voice sound too tinny, but still enough to remove most of the plosives in the recording. So let's take a quick listen to this. Those pesky peas, they're always bothering me. I hope I can show you how to fix these peas. Okay, so those peas 
they sounded pretty good, but they were still a little intense for me. But I did notice it removed the B and the low end rumble from the H. So it's okay to move around the frequency to hear how it sounds. Those pesky P's. Let's say, let's try it like 130. Those pesky P's. Okay, it made the P sound a little better, but now my voice was too tinny. So like, well, maybe if I just roll off to 60 hertz. Those pesky P's. Okay, so my voice is not as tinny, but the P's are still pretty intense. So I'm just gonna start, leave it here at 75 hertz. And now I can hit apply. And it now has applied on my entire track. Sweet, so what is great about this technique is that you can apply the EQ to the entire track instead of touching each individual plosive in your podcast. And if your podcast is over an hour with thousands of plosives, that is going to be a lot of editing. But that leads us perfectly into the second technique of removing plosives. Alrighty, so technique two involves touching each P or plosive or unwanted low end rumble individually. So here I still have these P plosive sounds. Let's hear it. Those pesky P's. Okay, so the 75 hertz roll off made it sound a little better, but it's still a little intense for me. So I'm going to reopen my parametric equalizer. You can go to effects, you can go to filter and EQ, but I don't like to do that every single time I need to pull up my plugin. So I did a hotkey of E and it pops up. So still when you zoom in, this is why I like waveform, you can zoom in and you can really see the low end rumble here. So now I'm just gonna select that a little bit and hit 75 Hertz. No, because in technique two, we're gonna make this a little more aggressive because we are only touching the plosive sound. So a good starting point for this is around 150 Hertz. It's intense, but I figured out that it removes most of the plosives, if not all of it, but it has to be applied in a very specific location. So let's try this right now. Let's hit apply. Okay, let's hear how it sounds. Those pesky peas. Yeah, cool. Let's do this one as well and apply. Let's hear it. Those pesky peas, they're always bothering me. I hope I can show you how to fix these peas. Nice, and I hear one more. You can see the low end rumble there. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. Alrighty, let's hear it. These peas. Nice, and so in the combination of technique one and technique two, you put them together to remove these plosives completely. And then after you, you're done with that, you go back into your multi-track view and then you just go through and you edit your podcast and it's just going to sound great. Please. They're always bothering me. And then if you find another one, you just go back into the waveform view and you're like, oh, there's a nasty P. I'm just going to do a quick low end roll off with all my hotkeys, but don't worry about that. We'll learn more and more about editing techniques and how to, to edit quickly and efficiently. So you don't have to focus on editing, but you can focus on creating more content for your podcast. And if you're a podcast editor, then you can get even quicker at editing podcasts. Alrighty, let's conclude this. So these are just some simple guidelines to start off. So feel free to adjust the settings as you need, but these settings have been very helpful for me. All right, so let's do a quick recap here. In order to prevent the plosives from occurring in the first place in your recording, you should buy a pop filter and use a pop filter. Pop filters are your friends. Find a pop filter that works for you and your microphone. That's very important. If it doesn't work for you or your microphone, don't get it. But of course you can always <laughs> hold a pop filter like this in case, you know, I can't get it on. Just hold it. It, it works out that way too. The second way to prevent a plosive is to move your microphone, either a little below your mouth, above your mouth, at the side of your mouth, but make sure it's always pointing directly towards your mouth. And let's just say that pesky plosive is in your recording already. So go ahead and try those two different EQ moves with a little bit of low end roll off at 75 Hertz or all the way up to 150 Hertz isolated on that P or B or that pesky plosive. If you have your own way 
that you prevent those plosives or how you remove those plosives from your cording, please comment below. I would love to hear how you do it. So if this information has been helpful to you, please go ahead and give that like and subscribe. So you can always be up to date with the latest Nick tips on podcast production and editing. <laughs> Lastly, if you are looking to start a podcast and you're just getting a little overwhelmed and not sure where to go or begin, then click the link below in my description to download my free jumpstart guide to podcasting. I take you step by step on the process of starting a podcast. So check it out, click it, download it. Let me know how it is for you. Again, thank you so much for watching and listening. I look forward to speaking with you. And so remember, have fun and happy podcasting. Take care.